Hi, I'm Brian Sparks, Senior Editor of Greenhouse Grower. Welcome to our Shop Talk Tech Tips series on greenhousegrower.com. This month, we are talking with insect experts to learn more about the most challenging greenhouse pests, as well as how growers can learn to identify and control them. We recently sat down with Anna Howell at Gowan to talk about spider mites. Here's what she had to say. You're talking about a pest that has over 1,100 documented hosts. So this is a mite that goes from plant to plant, from area to area. Um, it also has a very high reproductive potential. So they reproduce a lot. You know, females can lay up to about 200 eggs in their lifetime, and they live for about a month. They have a short life cycle. You have overlapping generations. So you've got adults with larvae, with nymphs, with eggs. You have multiple generations occurring throughout the year. And they also have a very high potential for resistance to miticides. And then the grower has to think about there's different species of spider mites and these different species of spider mites come out during different times. So now they have to learn about the different timings of these mites. Um, some sprays can actually flare some spider mites and some of them can suppress them. Um, there's microclimates to think about, you know, both outdoors and indoors in a greenhouse. So the environment out, you know, outside of the plant or around the plant may be different than within the canopy, um, depending on whether or not you have trays on concrete, um, they're in plastic, they're on top of benches, all of that is going to change the microclimate. Um, then on top of that, you know, a lot of greenhouse growers use biological control. <laughs> and so now you have to think about, I've got to control this pest. And you have to think about other pests that are in your greenhouse that you don't want to flare up. And you have to think about not damaging your biological control because you have a nice IPM program set up. It's a lot to juggle. That is a lot for growers to juggle. And so they've really had to learn a lot about prevention. Some of the research that we do with our commercial products, you know, there's different use, you know, whether or not you can apply it through the drip, if it's got any systemic activity, um, figuring out whether or not it's translaminar. Um, we're looking at how timing, how coverage using the correct, you know, gallons per acre, um, the rates and looking at intervals, all of those can affect efficacy. And so, we work very closely with our sales team and our growers to get as much feedback on how our products work and how we can improve them. Scouting is incredibly important. You can't wait until the temperatures really start rising. Um, you know, knowing how the behavior is, um, the typical timing of the different species with um, a mite like two spotted spider mite, you know, at lower temperatures, it's not really going to reproduce as quickly. But once you start hitting around the 80, 85 degrees, you can go from egg to adult in about five to seven days. And so if you're out there one week, the next week, you're already at your second generation. And then, you know, again, you've got a mite that can lay up to 200 eggs in her lifetime. Um, so knowing when to start scouting and how to start scouting um, in a greenhouse um, to spot it, spider mite really likes, you know, warm to hot environments with little humidity. So knowing those areas that have a lot of airflow in them, you might want to tr um, try checking those first. Um, also concentrate on plants that are known to be mite magnets. You know, you don't want to just like go out there and just randomly scout. If you know that there are specific plants that are prone to attracting mites. You need to really concentrate on those first. Um, one of the biggest things that we're really trying to push right now is to rotate with different modes of action because we really want to try to reduce the potential for any, any um, potential for resistance. Um, so knowing how the different like miticides work, using the appropriate, appropriate one based on like what you need, you know, what what's the majority of life cycles out there? Are there adults? Are there more nymphs? Are there more eggs? You know, do you need an adulticide or an ovicide? Um, is the product translaminar? 
Um, is it just contact activity? You know, again, you may want to keep those intervals a little bit tighter if it's just contact. Um, and again, what's the effect on your biocontrol? So you want to make sure that um, you're able to keep as much of your biocontrol out there, or if you can use more of your heavy hitters where you need to knock down and you're not going to have to worry about your biocontrol, you can definitely use those. And there's also, you know, keeping, keeping your plants nice and healthy. You don't want to over fertilize them because an over fertilized plant it tends to attract more mites. You know, there has been several studies that shows a link between high nitrogen levels and an increase in spider mite populations. They really love those nice green plants that are flushing those nice soft leaves. Scout. I, <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough on how important it is to scout. And saying something like there's only one mite out there, I don't need to be out there. There's no such thing as just one mite. And if there is just one mite, all it takes is one female to start a colony. You don't even need a male to do that. So the populations can explode on you incredibly quickly.